Uh, I'd like to introduce Nirav Patel. Um, Nirav is currently a part-time PhD student in Earth Systems and GIS at George Mason University. Um, he works as a system engineer, a GIS engineer for Google Maps for work at Dido during the day and does his PhD classes and world pop research at night. Uh, amazing. Um, he intends to keep the World Pop pro Project as an integral part of his dissertation and uh, is continuing on that work that's happening in the Earth Engine platform. Uh, Thank you so much. Join me in uh, welcoming Nirav. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, my name is Nirav Patel. I'm part of the World Pop team. Uh, the World Pop Project aims to provide an open access archive of spatial demographic data sets. Um, our current focus is on Central and South America, Africa and Asia, and we really aim to provide uh, transparent and open methods on how we develop these data sets, as well as trying to really identify um, you know, how we can impact health and uh, planning applications. So our product is a our core product is a 100 meter resolution uh, population data set, population count data set. And uh, it's attracted a lot of interest from various organizations uh, uh, for age and sex structures, maternal and newborn health, poverty mapping, urbanization and settlement growth, as well as population mobility and dynamics. One example of that is we've helped, you know, provided the figures for the World Malaria Report 2013 for the WHO. We've also worked with the UNDP in uh, really making uh, the maternal birth rates, the subnational maternal birth rates, like at, uh, you know, very high resolution data for the report. Uh, also worked with the World Bank in uh, mapping a decade of urban change for 27 countries in their East Asia and Pacific division using NASA MODIS data. So uh, that was about 20% of the world surface and uh, Earth surface, and also like 30% of the population. Um, also, we uh, work with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and doing mapping for financial planning uh, for uh, uh, poor areas in you know, different countries. So how does our population mapping process work? So we first start off by getting a, the highest resolution uh, census data that we can find. And essentially, you know, this shows counts you know, on, on a census level. But we, we want to disaggregate it so that we can get further higher resolution data. So the way we do that is we use machine learning approaches to use the 20 to 30 covariate data sets that would provide an indicator that this, this is where populations exist. So for example, pulling urban areas out of uh, land cover uh, that's available, or lights at night. And essentially, by learning, uh, you know, using this process, uh, we can transform these population counts that are in the census uh, blocks into uh, further, further disaggregated counts on a 100 meter resolution. So very finely seeing where people are living within the census blocks. And so, just to give you an example, this is a full example of Vietnam and also China that we've run uh, with this process. And our current work, you know, we. In, in you know producing these 100 meter resolution data sets, we also have been working with the Ebola con you know control you know sort of processes that are going on in West Africa. So we've been integrating in cell phone data provided by Orange uh, for uh, all of West Africa to see co combine the population data counts with mobility uh, along with the Flowminder Foundation. Um, also in March, you know the New York Times asked us, uh, can you produce a map of Ukraine within a couple of days? And so. We were able to produce a map of Ukraine using our process and gathering that data within five or six days. Um, and so we produced that for, the, for their consumption. Uh, we also work with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with also um, working on polio um, you know, eradication efforts. So trying to really get uh, age, age structures uh, by getting census data um, on a, you know, GPS located census data on households. Um, this example showing a, uh, an example with uh, Nigeria with a population you know, less than age of five. And what we're also trying to do, we also have a Google Compute Engine grant, uh, and we're trying to integrate our process on the Compute Engine because we're running this on local machines or virtual machines that we have access to right now. But it's constraining us our speed in order to produce these data sets. And um, our work with Earth Engine also ties into that because uh, we were actually fortunate to collaborate with Dr. Paolo Gamba at the University of Pavia on his algorithm for extracting urban extents um, from Earth Engine using Landsat 5 and Landsat 7 data. And what that enables us to do is really make our covariate data for our land cover better in our population mapping process and make it more unique to certain years. So we would have population for 2005, 2007, whichever year we would want that's in the Landsat archive. So we produced, a, we recently had a paper published on, on some of the research that we're doing in collaboration with Dr. Paolo Gamba. And you know, we provided these extraction results for you know, different areas in Indonesia. Um, and also kind of the test that we did was we compared the statistical performance of our po population mapping method along with uh, test one, which was our control 2007 MDA uh, federal uh, 
a GeoCover data set that's available, and we combine it with you know, different sets of years for test two, three, and four, um, what we've extracted from uh, Google Earth Engine uh, for different sets of years. So the critical important thing here is that in, in the population mapping process, the statistical outputs, the, if you look at test two, three, and four, the importance of you know, land cover distance to built areas or distance to populated points that are really impacted by the integration of this new um, you know, urban extents that we pulled from the Google Earth Engine really modified uh, the, the performance of the method and you know, really gave us better, better results. And so some of our future work ties into this by you know, we want to extract current data from Google Earth Engine on urbanization starting off. And also, we've been really impressed by open street map data, um, and you know, especially in West Africa with the current humanitarian efforts, and uh, really producing current data. Um, and you know, being active with that, so we're increasing, you know, including that on a global scale. So it you know, really improves the performance of uh, um, our you know, visually and statistically of our population mapping method, as well as we were integrating GeoTweet data as well. So for example, in Indonesia surrounding Jakarta, you can see that um, in Jakarta, it's on the highest tweet per capita you know, uh, countries in the world. And so when we integrate GeoTweet data, it also increases the statistical and um, visual uh, impact of our, of our data sets. And I uh, just want to send a grazie mille to uh, Dr. Paolo Gamba at the University of Pavia. You know, thank you so much for allowing us to collaborate with you. And um, uh, thank you so much. Do you do this on a global scale? It looked like you did, but then I wasn't sure. Uh, so far, we have Central and South America, uh, Africa and Asia, but we're trying to you know, do a complete global scale. Only biggest constraint is just right now it's the computing power, right? So that's why we're on Compute Engine and um, also Earth Engine, we're trying to speed the process up. So in the World Bank, they have a data set similar, but you go much higher resolution. So will you have annual data or what's your goal? Well, we provide like simulations on our website. You know, we have like a, you know, different sets of years depending on what you want. So we have urban change data. So if you want to see what we did for the World Bank, you can freely download that if you'd like. But the thing is, is we simulate those years. So let's say you download, a, you know, if it's just a general population data set um, for let's say Guatemala, and you know, it'll, it'll have basically, you know, year 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015 simulations. But we're using like land cover, let's say from 2007, right? So we're simulating the numbers so it's accurate to those years, but at the same time, we would like to have land cover that's accurate to those years. So that's how the collaboration with Earth Engine will allow us to, let's say, we want to integrate you know, data from 1995. We'd go on Earth Engine, pull out those urban extents, you know, put them on top, and you know, have a, at least a, a better you know, representation of that data. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.